A couple weeks ago, I was messing around in Mario Kart and started driving backwards. I got almost all the way around the course, but got stopped by a wall right at the very end. This seemed insignificant at first, but it got me thinking, how many tracks can you actually do backwards? To figure this out, I would need to go into every single Mario Kart track in time trials and attempt to do them backwards. This was going to take a while, so I decided to scout every track and weed out the ones that were obviously not possible so that I could go through the ones that I thought might be possible in more detail later. A couple hours later, I had a list of 41 different tracks that I thought were theoretically possible to drive backwards. About half of them were on flat ground and were so easy that I could do them with my eyes closed. These included tracks such as Yoshi Circuit, Mario Circuit, Toad Harbor, and Moo Moo Meadows. Due to how simple they are, I'm not going to go into them. Our first track is Thwomp Ruins. Right out of the gate, this track looks completely impossible. There is a massive gap here that seems too large to cross, but right here there is a ramp that when boosted off of gives an incredible amount of height. I kept trying to get far enough to land on the other side, or for Lakitu to get tricked and put me on the wrong side. I was getting so incredibly close, but nothing I did worked. Eventually, I concluded that Thwomp Ruins was completely impossible and marked it off the list. Next up was Twisted Mansion. The main obstacle with this one was this wall, where you normally come out of a glider section. I tried for hours trying to make it all the way over. I kept getting so close, but whenever I got far enough, Lakitu would grab me and pull me back the other way. After messing around in this area for a while, I found that if you bonked against this corner, it would disable Lakitu, allowing you to make the jump and finish the rest of the course fairly easily. I don't know why this happens, but I'm happy, so I'm not gonna question it. Dolphin Shoals is another one that appears impossible when you first look at it. I tried using this bump here to launch myself over to the other side, and even though I was getting really close, after an hour or so, I decided to call it quits and move on to Bone Dry Dunes. Right off the bat, I didn't have super high hopes for this one. I tried a few different things, such as boosting across the gap, but I wasn't even getting close. Next up is a course that seemed very promising, Dragon Driftway. The first obstacle is a small ramp. I got past this one by simply going around into the corner, hopping, and using a mushroom. After a bit more driving, I encountered another ramp that I got over pretty easily as well. Right before the finish line, there's one more ramp. Luckily, this one can also be avoided by using a mushroom and hopping, allowing me to finish the track. Next came my hardest challenge yet, Baby Park. It's a circle. That's pretty much it. Moving on, we have Animal Crossing. Right at the beginning, we have a ramp that looks really hard, but really all you have to do is use a mushroom and hop at the right time to soar over the gap and end up on the other side. It's pretty easy, but looks really cool when you pull it off. The final obstacle is a wide gap with a glider ramp on the other side. I tried boosting off of the fountain that comes right before the gap and got incredibly close. After a lot of trial and error, I discovered that by changing my cart combo to be one with a high speed stat and getting a lot of coins, I could just barely clear the gap and finish Animal Crossing. I tried to do GBA Mario Circuit by coming out of the glider ramp and snaking my way back along this ramp in the hopes that Lag 2 would bring me up to the platform above but these bricks kept getting in my way. After a couple hours of attempts, I wasn't making any progress and gave up. Next came by far the most difficult track I have ever attempted, Music Park. There are five main obstacles in this thing. The first is this little ledge here. At first, I tried bouncing off of this pad to get up and over it, but I kept smacking into the roof. But it turns out that if you come up to this wall and hop, it will simply let you straight over. Now you might be saying, Jopes, this ledge is obviously way too high to simply hop over, and you would be right if it weren't for the music notes. On Music Park in this section, there are these music notes that jump every 4 seconds. When they hit the ground, they bounce players into the air, allowing a trick to be performed. It just so happens that the bounding box for where the bounce affects players is slightly off-center, which means if I get as close as I can to the wall and hop, I get bounced by the effect in midair, giving me enough height to clear the barrier. The second obstacle is this gap right here. Using the bounce from the music notes, it is possible to trick off of the end and sneak up onto this ledge. The timing for this is incredibly precise, so I was having a ton of trouble getting it consistently. Eventually, I got so fed up with not having the correct timing that I just did the math to figure out exactly where I needed to be and when to start driving so that I got the jump every single time. The next part of Music Park is a wall that is definitely too high to get around, but right before it is another one of those bounce pads. Now, I spent over an hour trying to get over this thing. I'm not even joking, this file is 40 gigabytes. 
but finally, as I was about to give up and call it impossible, I managed to bounce on the pad twice, giving me an insane amount of momentum that allowed me to get far enough away that Lakitu picked me up and put me down before the obstacle. From there, I had two more things to get around, but both of them were pretty easy and were solved by getting Lakitu to put me in the wrong spot after falling off the course. Piranha Plant Slide was another one that I really thought was going to be possible. Right at the start, there is a massive cavern with a pipe at the bottom. When you try to simply fall into the pipe, Lakitu brings you back up. But it turns out that the roof of the pipe doesn't have collision, meaning you can go right through it and avoid Lakitu. Once down in here, you can use a mushroom to get on top of this platform, but then you get blocked by this ledge that is far too high to get onto. Wario's Goldmine did have a small obstacle in the form of this jump right here, but I got around it in a few tries by using a mushroom and hopping at the right time. Super Bell Subway was another track that I spent a good amount of time on. This course only has one obstacle, which seems insurmountable, but I did have a plan. When a player hits this train with enough speed, they spin out but they also gain height. I tried to clip off the train as it came from the wall and bounce up onto the platform, but I kept running into this railing. I spent a while trying to think of other methods and it suddenly hit me. I can just get on the train at an earlier location and ride it all the way to the jump. This is so obvious, why did it take me so long to figure this out? Right off the bat, Mushroom Gorge looks fairly hard. I was able to get onto the left mushroom chain by using this bump as a ramp and boosting into the air. By jumping off of them one by one, I was able to get pretty far along. Once I got to the green mushrooms, I was able to jump off of the first one, causing Lakitu to bring me up to the higher one. From this green one, I tried mushrooming onto the red one and hopping, but it wouldn't let me on. It was almost like there was an invisible wall that was stopping me in midair. I also wasn't able to trick off the green mushroom for a little extra height because the bounding box where the tricks are possible was only on one side of the mushroom. I was about to give up when something interesting happened. I was going to the left path using the same method as before, but when I hit this green mushroom, I hit it on the side, causing my cart to tilt into the air and launch much higher than before, allowing me to get to the red mushrooms. Sadly, I didn't have enough momentum to make it up and over the gap, so I fell, but this method seemed very promising. The only problem was that it was really hard. These bounce pads are so random that it's almost completely impossible to control the speed or direction that you get bounced with, so even after trying to perfectly replicate the situation, I was still flying off the mushroom far away from my goal. After over half an hour of attempts by multiple different people, this happened. Waluigi Stadium was the next course that gave me some trouble. Pretty much the only barrier is this ramp that goes over this gap. I kept trying to mushroom off of this side to hop over it, and while I was getting pretty close, I couldn't quite make it. Eventually, I changed up my cart combination and collected 10 coins, which was enough to give me the last little bit of height I needed to make it over and finish the course. Next up was Daisy Cruiser. This one looks pretty difficult at first, but all you have to do to get onto this ledge is ride up the pool wall and go fast. Pretty easy, but it looks cool at least. Next up is Squeaky Clean Sprint. I had initially marked this track as completely impossible, and I mean, look at this gap. Looks way too big, right? But after mentioning it to a friend, he decided to try and somehow manage to get across the gap. However, try as we might, neither of us were able to replicate it, and he wasn't recording when he did it, so we almost gave up. But when I was messing around in this area, I mushroomed onto the side of this thing and got a ridiculous amount of height. But when Lakitu grabbed me from the out of bounds area, instead of putting me right back where I was, he put me onto the shortcut path on top. This gave me a whole ton of height to work with, but I had misaligned myself, meaning I crashed into the toilet bowl. At first, I wasn't able to reproduce this, but I discovered that if I lined myself up with these coins, I was able to get the trick every time. With a couple more attempts, I was also able to get over the toilet bowl relatively easily. Next up came this yellow towel that was far too high to simply jump over with a mushroom. We spent a few minutes looking for alternative methods for getting above this thing when Mac noticed that you can just get onto this ledge by hopping at the right time. It took me almost 20 minutes to recreate it, after which it was still difficult, but not nearly as bad as before. I kept flying off, and one time that I did manage to get on, I got too close to the middle and Lakitu pulled me away. Eventually, I did manage to get all the way around this ledge. 
Right before the yellow cloth, there was a pencil that was still too short to hop onto the yellow from, but I was able to use the tip as a ramp to make it onto the next section, finishing the race. From here, there were just a couple more tracks that I was able to do until I had finished with every course in the game. Now I could get the final total and call it a day, right? This is what I thought too, and I was about to start editing this video when I decided to look up if anyone had tried this before. And it turns out that I am not the first person to do this, not by a long shot. There's actually a thriving community that is dedicated to doing tracks backwards, and they've managed to do everything that I've done, and even more. While I could end the video here, I don't think it would be complete without mentioning the amazing accomplishments of these people. So here are the five additional tracks that are possible. First up is Snowland. I had tried this one earlier, but I wasn't able to get it. I don't know why, because this one is literally the easiest thing ever, you just jump off this bit and go around it. Boo Lake is the second course. For this, you can just get over the first two ramps by jumping into the water and holding back on the control stick to slow your descent. Then there is this ramp. Getting past this one requires a mushroom and a well-timed hop. It isn't particularly hard, just kinda finicky. Once you are on this platform, you have to come up to the ramp and do a 180 onto these blocks. Then you can use them as a ramp to jump out of the water and land on the track. There are a couple more blocks and ramps, but you can go around them fairly easily. The next course was discovered as I was editing this video by a guy named Andy Best. For the first half of New York Minute, it is pretty much normal driving. Then you get to this ramp, which looks completely impossible to get over. And it is. To this day, nobody has gotten over this ramp. They went through it. Using a very difficult glitch called a wall cross and positioning himself perfectly, Andy was able to hop to fully clip out of bounds and avoid an invisible wall. Then he went to a very specific spot in Mushroom to get Lakitu to pick him up and put him on top of the ramp. And then the very next day, minutes before I was planning to record the voiceover for this video, he did it again. He came up to the ramp and did another wall cross to get inside it. Then, by carefully navigating inside the wall, he managed to turn around and mushroom into the wall, completing the track. The final course of this video is Coconut Mall, which they solved by repeatedly banging their heads into a wall. I'm not joking, this is literally how you do the run. Anyways, what you need to do to complete this track backwards is to hop up onto this ledge and drive back and forth into this wall a little over 20 times, at which point you can drive to the left, cause Lakitu to have a stroke, and get dropped off at the top, allowing you to easily finish the race. To understand why this works and what happened here, we need to understand how Lakitu works in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. On every course, there are these boxes, called checkpoints. When you fall off the map, Lakitu will attempt to retrace the checkpoints you were last in before he picked you up, and then he drops you back onto the ground. If after 5 seconds Lakitu still hasn't brought you back, a secondary failsafe kicks in, causing him to simply drop you off in the box that you last went out of bounds in. When you go out of bounds in Coconut Mall, Lakitu tries to retrace your steps over the checkpoints, but since you went back and forth so many times, he has to go back and forth between the different checkpoints a lot. After 5 seconds, the failsafe kicks in, causing Lakitu to put you in the safe spot of the box that you left the track in, which just so happens to be the checkpoint box at the top of the ramp, which allows you to finish the course with little extra work. So in the end, there are 34 different courses that are possible backwards. That is a lot more than I expected. If you want to check out the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Backwards Discord, the link is in the description. If you want to try doing some courses backwards yourself, I definitely recommend checking out Andy Best and Scar's channels, as they are really impressive and can teach you quite a lot about already discovered methods. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, because I am a channel that is trying to grow and likes help get this video recommended to more people. I will try to make similar content to this in the future, and you will most likely only see my videos again if you are subscribed. Thank you, and have a nice day.